Design D has to win. Design D is by far and away the best design of the four. Without a doubt, in my opinion. I'm not super choked I didn't get my pick for the first design poll, but if D doesn't win this one, I will be so choked. Anyway, stick around to find out more why. Welcome back for another Game Break, everybody. So, you know, we're in day 31 of the Uden Chronicle Kickstarter, and there is a ton of information to go over today. We got the final results for the first character poll. We have a second character poll, which we get to vote on on Thursday. We have a bunch of updates to cover from the developers. We have a ton of new gameplay information from the AMA that happened last Saturday. So there's a ton to get through. Let's get started. So first off, we have the poll results for the first character poll. And it was a tight two-way race, which I was thinking it would be, but the one I thought would win did not. So Design C, the Skeleton King won, and it was only slightly more than 20 vote difference. Design B was a very close second. And I'm still very, very surprised that the uh, pretty boy army was defeated by the Beastmen Horde, it seems. So no, congratulations to everyone who voted for Design C. Uh, looking forward to seeing what he looks like in game, especially his sprite. And his character profile sounds uh, sounds a little wacky too, since his favorite food's what? Champagne and jelly beans? So no, very, very curious to see what he looks like. People who voted for Design B, Mariama has gone on record saying that Design B could show up in the game in some capacity still. He hasn't finally decided yet. So there is hope for uh, the new wave vampire fans. And it sounds like there could be maybe even, you know, vampires in future games and stuff too, right? So, hey, something to look forward to potentially. Okay, so this is a character poll I'm really invested in. Very, very, very much so. So let's, let's go over them all and give you my thoughts about them. So design A, we have the, the fledgling ninja. Okay, so with her design, you know, you very much get the the naive, I don't know what I'm doing type character, which can be fine. Like there are characters that are, you know, maybe clumsy or inexperienced, and they can be very endearing characters. It's just when I have a choice between that or what appears to be a very confident, slightly older, mature ninja, that that's what I'm going to gravitate towards naturally. So since I have a choice, I would go that direction. So design A, you know, there, there I feel like she's going to have a lot of fans for sure. I feel like she's definitely probably going to be a favorite of the Japanese backers since, you know, they love everything pretty and cute generally. I know that's a bit of a stereotype, but I feel like it's a little bit true. So I feel like design A might have quite a bit of backing. So design B, you know, when it comes to her her character art, you know, it's not too bad. Um, you know, looks pretty good. But the thing that bothers me the most with B is I would have to say her color palette. It just seems a bit on the bland side. You know, maybe if she had a bit of a different color palette and, you know, things were brightened up a bit, I would, you know, gravitate towards her a little bit more. But just the way she stands now, I'm just, you know, not digging it. She just does just frankly seem to be a bit on the bland side so you know not not feeling B so much right now design C the battle loving ninja so with design C I, I very much like what she's going for she's going for the more kind of like the badass kind of like gangster biker kind of look almost for the ninja I do like the face mask on her I do I just don't like the mummy wrapping that's going on on, on her body I'm just not I'm just not a huge fan. It's just really not working for me in this character art right here. Maybe it would look good in game, but just right here, it's just not grabbing me so much. So then we get to design D. Okay, first of all, you know, she looks confident. You know, it says she's a veteran, so it sounds like she's experienced. She she knows what she's going to be doing. And the other thing that, that got me thinking about these designs, you know, for example, the fledgling Ninja A versus the, the veteran ninja D. You know, would that potentially affect their stats in game? Would they make, you know, the fledgling ninja maybe not as quite a good a character and they would make the veteran character like a bit better in terms of stats? Like I I want a 
viable, you know, party member. You know, I don't always pick like the best party members for, you know, via stats and, and such in game, but I do like it when, you know, characters that I do like aesthetically also happen to be, you know, good characters just to use in the game. So that's another reason why I'm kind of gravitating towards D, but no, anyway, so, you know, she looks confident. I think she's got a great aesthetic. Uh, you know, love the the light kind of like silvery blue long hair, and she does look like you know she's got a bit of it like a bit of it like that tan skin look too. No, I just think she she has a really cool unique design uh, in terms of uh, a ninja profile, especially when the you know the the Suikoden series is concerned. Um, she looks you know she looks very unique in terms of the, some of the female ninjas we've had so no I'm definitely liking D I really hope that she wins and you included a new add-on which is the collectible cards that contain every single character in the game oh you dirty bastards you you knew exactly how to get to us with with that add-on I've seen many other people say pretty much the same thing I am and it's just you guys really know how to squeeze another few bucks out of us. You really do. But hey, you know, you're giving us something that we like. So, you know, who are we to complain? But my fucking wallet is hurting from this Kickstarter. And we've also met a lot of stretch goals, which has ensured we're going to get a lot more mini games. So the first one that we got that I'll talk about is we got the card game in Uden Chronicle. A lot of people are really excited for this. A lot of people seem to be really hoping it'll be very similar to Final Fantasy VIII's card game, which was Triple Triad, which was a very simple card game that, you know, you could go around the world and play. You know, it generally had characters or summons or monsters, and, you know, they'd have different stats and such like that. So I could very much see something like that in Uden Chronicle. You know, our card deck would probably have, you know, all the various recruits we could get, you know, enemy characters, enemy monsters, and so on and so forth. So we met the farming stretch goal in Uden Chronicle. And, you know, it's very much, you know, you raise crops, you get fruits and vegetables, you know, you raise your livestock, you get milk and meat from them. It'll affect the amount of citizens that are able to live in your town. You can sell off excess product to make money, which is cool. I'm just very much wondering if it will have a tactical effect in the game as well. You know, will you be able to garrison more troops at your castle town? Will just having, you know, a bigger, more efficient farm just make your army larger in general, allowing you to, you know, have a bit more of an advantage when it comes to army combat in the game? So no, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the overall effect the farming system does have within this game. The dual stretch goal has also been met for this game, which is a key component uh, of the Suikoden formula for a lot of people, and it is definitely a welcome addition to this game. It just adds that level of dramatic flair and drama to the Suikoden series when telling the story, and there are so many iconic moments that involve the dual system in the original series that it would have been it would have been greatly missed if it didn't make it to Yudin. And they go on record saying that it is going to have, you know, dramatic cutscenes within it. There will be dialogue and even possible negotiation with people um, when duels are occurring and that this system is going to be completely revamped. So I think every one of us is really looking forward to seeing what duels look like in the future. So a great addition. And I also just want to send a very special shout out to Ben Wendell. Some of you may have seen him kicking around and commenting in the comments section, but no, he got a special shout out on the Kickstarter here for his concentrated effort to just spread the word via social media and other platforms to just, you know, have people be aware of this game so they can support it. And he's been doing it on his own dime too, apparently, according to the update. So no, Ben, thank you very much, brother. Really appreciate all your hard work, bro. And, uh, you know, thank you very much on behalf of all of us, eh? So now to get to the meat and potatoes of this update, because there was a lot of gameplay information released in the AMA that happened last Saturday. So let's go over all that juicy stuff. So the first piece of news that I have to share with you is female beastmen have been confirmed for Yudin Chronicle. I think this is a welcome addition. I'm loving the look of the, you know, the male beastmen we've seen so far. And I'm very curious to see what Kawano can do with the female beastmen aesthetic. So no, very happy that we're getting some of those characters. Love that type of diversity in the game. Another thing that will be unique to Yudin Chronicle versus the Suikoden series is apparently party members that are not in your active battle party 
will still gain experience. They will gain it at a slower rate, but they will still gain experience nonetheless. But I mean, that's never really been a problem for the Suikoden games because if you bring really under level characters into battle, they level up extremely quickly. Probably the most quickly out of any RPG, RPG series I've ever played. So no, good to know, but it wasn't a big thing, I think, in my opinion. It's not like a Final Fantasy or one of those types of game games where, you know, if you don't have someone in your active battle party, they gain no experience and then it takes hours potentially to get them up to snuff. So we can, and it has always been really good for having your characters, you know, be able to catch up quite quickly. And I figured Udim Chronicle would probably be the same. So, no, good to hear. Another thing that has been confirmed, and I figured it would be, is... Weapon distances have been confirmed for the game. So in the original Suikoden, we had three types of weapon distance attacks. We had long range, we had medium range, and we had short range. And all three of those have been essentially confirmed. There will be weapon ranges in this game. So you will very much have to be you know, very careful of who's in the front row and who's in the back row in terms of if they can attack or not. So good to know, but I figured that was probably already the case anyway. And another thing that was asked is, you know, will there potentially be, you know, robots and, and, and stuff of that nature in this game? And the creators responded with saying, you know, we don't want to go too sci-fi with this game. You know, we have thought of potentially having, you know, maybe like arcane machines and stuff like that. And even the original Suikoden series had like, you know, a little bit of robotics and stuff like that. You know, we had the tricksters who, you know, could manipulate machinery to a limited degree so on and so forth, but nothing super crazy sci-fi. And Mariyama has gone on record saying, you know, there will be countries with varying levels of technology. So I could definitely see there being, you know, firearms in this game, you know, very much the Howling Voice Guild of the original Suikoden world had access to firearms. You know, they were very limited in number and, you know, they were very secretive, you know, about their firearm use. So no, we could very much see firearms in this game, but I think it would be very much restricted to like one or two characters, which I always found pretty cool. So no, nope. another thing that we know about the lore of the game. And another quick shout out to, I believe it's Acerbus or Acrobus. Uh, some of you may have seen him kicking around the comments section in my Uden Chronicle videos, but no, he asked a very important question during the AMA. And he asked, will this game have random encounters? And the developers confirmed that this game would indeed have random encounters. And that is something that I don't mind one bit. There has been a lot of pushback over the years um, against random encounters in games. People find them quite annoying nowadays. But, you know, Suikoden games, you know, the random encounters always happened. You know, the battles were over very quickly. Like, they were not extended encounters. So they weren't that much of an annoyance, really, at least to me personally. And the developers did also say that they may include some type of, you know, encounter slider where you can up or decrease the random encounter rate uh, out in the field. So, you know, there is potentially that. So anyway, thanks a lot, bro, for asking that question. I was very curious to see uh, what they were going to do. And another user asked, will there be relationships in this game? And they specifically reference, you know, Fire Emblem. And Persona, for example, where you can really build relationships with your characters in those games. And they pretty much responded being like, mm, there will be some relationship development within the party conversations that take place. But it will not be super in-depth. It's not going to be like a Persona or a Fire Emblem where you have super extended conversations and relationship building and relationship ranks between characters. It's just going to add a bit of flavor to the game. And that is all I was really expecting personally. And that's all I really need. I just need the, you know, a little bit of conversation happening between people once in a while, some comedy, maybe there'll be like a little crush here and there, but no, that's, that's, that's all I wanted. And, uh, and I'm glad to see that that's the direction they're taking because that's never been the core focus of the Suikoden games, which I've, which I've said before, we have other RPG series that do that incredibly well. So, you know, we, we don't need it in every single game. So I was very excited by the answer to this next question. And it was, Will there be multiple portraits in the character's portrait window when they're having conversations? So two things. One, 
Character portraits weren't confirmed before this, and second, it wasn't confirmed, obviously, that there were going to be multiple portraits when people are having conversations, because the Suikoden games generally didn't have a super amount of variety in terms of portraits. And the reason this has me excited is it's just another opportunity to, for us to look at the great character art that's happening in the game. It adds a bit more depth and emotion to conversations that are taking place, especially if there's multiple portraits in the character portrait window. Perfect example, and I said this in my review of the game, in Grandia, the characters had a wide variety of different character portraits in the window, and it was essential and so key in telling that game's story with added levels of emotional depth. It just made the game more engaging, emotions were expressed much more well because of multiple portraits that were occurring in the portrait dialogue box. So no, it's a great addition to the game. I'm very happy and it's just going to allow them to tell a better, more emotionally engaging story. And along with the confirmation of United Hero Attacks, uh, there are also going to be United Hero Magic Attacks, and very much like the original Suikoden series where you can combine high level you know, fire and lightning magic, for example, to do an even more devastating attack on the enemy party. So no, that's cool that that's been confirmed as well. And they also mentioned this too, and it's going to be a big thing for a lot of people. You can pet the egg legs. They are going to allow you to pet the egg legs in this game. And goddamn, I hope they bite your hand when when you do, because they are they are so evil looking. I would love it if one or two would just would just take a nip out of you if you tried to pet them. I think that'd be pretty pretty cute. And another thing, I just want to add with the you know the United Hero Attack trailer that played the other day. Who thought that original screenshot of the game that took place during that trailer was just a mock-up or, or concept art? This guy right here. I thought that was going to be something that they were going to strive to do. In no way did I think that was in-game footage. I, I thought for sure that was a mock-up. So, you know, seeing that, that what I thought was a mock-up design in the trailer just honestly blew me the fuck away. And another thing that I didn't mention when I did the reaction to it is like, holy shit, that battle theme track, mwah, so good. So now let's go over all the stretch goals we've met since last Wednesday, since I lasted an update, and let's look at the stretch goals that we have yet to achieve. So the first stretch goal we met since last Wednesday is another story, Marissa. So I covered that a bit last time, and very much we don't know how it's going to fit within the greater framework of the game. We don't know if it's going to be a side story or a post-game story. We, we just don't know yet. Very interested to see, you know, how we see things from Marissa's perspective, since she is from a very powerful faction within the game. So no, glad we met that. Next, we met the farm system, which I covered already in this video. I challenge you the dual system, awesome addition. All hands on deck, card battle mode met that the other day. So today we will reach the playing favorites ranking mode. We will reach that today. Very much a, you know, like cool addition, I guess. You know, you can keep track of, you know, who you're using and, you know, how many hours you spend with them and character stats and so on and so forth. So that's a cool addition, like nothing that blows me away personally, but you no, know, it is there for people to enjoy. So the next we have is the Heart of Gold at 3.8 million, the theater system. So the theater system, if I'm being completely honest, is not something I used a ton of in this weekend in games, especially three. But hey, you know, I'm a different person now and I feel like maybe this is something I could possibly fool around with a bit more uh, in Uden Chronicle. So no, another another cool mini game for people to to use and see. And I'm sure there will be some hilarious antics going on depending on who's playing what role in certain plays so there could be there could be some funny stuff with that so 3.85 patience so character 10 joins you know uh, like the backing should start skyrocketing here pretty quick i would assume you know every big video game kickstarter that i've looked at um you know from like number one rank to 10 rank they've all had huge bumps the last few days huge goddamn bumps so I would be shocked and amazed if this one was not the same. I, I'm expecting a pretty big bump in the last 48 hours. I will be absolutely amazed if we don't. I, I would be so shocked if we didn't. So, you know, 4 million were at Origin Story, which is the backstory novel 
that would be free DLC. So a novelist DLC, that's that's pretty damn interesting, uh, in my opinion. And if we go to the DLC page here in the game, you know, it's still showing up as for the second DLC as question marks. So I don't know if it just hasn't been updated yet. And this backstory novel is indeed the second piece of backer DLC, or if the second piece of DLC is something yet to come. I'm, I'm, I obviously can't comment on that because the page hasn't been updated yet. So no, the idea of a novel, it's cool. I always love world building. I love extended lore. I love backstory and stuff like that. I just, I guess I had in my mind very much that we were going to be getting playable DLC is is where I'm coming from. So I am kind of hoping still that there will be another piece of DLC that is, you know, kind of like Marissa's that's actually more in-game content. But no, I am happy still with the, the novel. I am very curious to see what is written about in it. And it could even provide hints to, you know, the sequel game or something of that nature, right? So the next one after that is a big jump so I'm, I'm assuming they're expecting some buns the last few days. I am. So 4.25 million, the depths. I'm guessing it sounds like it could be an end game dungeon of some kind. You know, could be maybe a random generated dungeon every floor. Who knows? Um, I doubt it would be that, though. Or maybe, who knows? Uh, but, you know, that's what that kind of sounds like to me. And it sounds like there's even more stretch goals beyond that. So, you know, we got a, uh, you know, we got a lot of uh, stretch goals here to go, you know. So, yeah, because we're at 3.68 at the making of this video. You'd think we'd get to at least 4 million. You'd think with all the bumps I've seen the last few days, like a lot of the big Kickstarters for video games. And this one's included among them because it's what, sixth or fifth now? They've all had damn near a million dollar bumps the last day. So, you know, I'd be I'd be definitely sad to see if, if we didn't get that too. you know, at least 500K, you would think so. But no, time will tell. Time will tell. And the last thing I want to touch on is the developers once again addressed everyone's fears over, you know, feature creep, having too many, you know, stretch goals in this game and that their their core vision is being compromised by how much they're interacting with the fans and how much say the fans are having. You know, and I and I understand all those concerns, but once again, they laid all their goddamn cards on the table when it comes to feature creep. They said they can scale up to a hundred additional development members if they need it. They have mentioned they are looking for a publisher, and I'd be shocked if they didn't get a publisher based off of just how successful this Kickstarter has been so far. So no, I, I feel like they have planned very well for all the features they want to implement. Like even I had a concern with the fact that the increments between goals got really shortened in the middle of the stretch of the Kickstarter. You know, we all of a sudden had, you know, $25,000 increments between goals instead of 50 or a hundred thousand. And they've gone on record saying that that's something they planned for and that they've even gone to publishers to address certain stretch goals, the amount of funding they need to see if they could shorten the distance between goals. So, you know, it sounds like they planned everything still. We've trusted them this goddamn far. And once again, hey, if I get fucked over, then I'll just never trust again. That This is my last time trusting on a Kickstarter this heavily, especially with the amount I've contributed so far. I don't even want to say what I've given so far. So no, I think we need to just give them our trust. And if we get fucked over, lesson learned, and we just, we won't do it again. And they've said, you know, after we unlocked the Marissa DLC, essentially, we're going to be seeing things we've never seen before, essentially when it comes to a Suikoden game. We're going to be seeing new features and new content that we've never seen before in the mainline Suikoden series that we're going to see in this one. And I'm all for that. And they say, you know, in their letter addressing everyone's fears, essentially give us the benefit of the doubt. Trust us. You've trusted us this far. I'm going to trust them. You know, if I get burned, I get burned. You know, it's it's the Suikoden series. It's so beloved to me that I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And and they have the video game development chops to back it up. You know, and it seems like they have a really good plan. So I'm going to believe that they can make this game the best game it can be. So feature creeps one thing, but another thing was, you know, is their core vision being compromised? And they've said many times, no. Like, we're not putting things in this game that we can't put in. We're just not strictly catering to the fans. 
when we're making this game. We still very much have a core idea of the game we want to make. We just also want to have an interactive experience with the fans as well and let them contribute in small ways to the overall experience, which I think is great because I'm not going to name names or specific examples because you know all what they are when I mention them, but we have all seen the effects of what happens when creators let fans have too much input into the narrative they are creating. We have all seen what happens when fans have too much clout when it comes to an artist's creative work. And we don't want to see that happen because it could completely fuck everything up. Absolutely. Fan input is important, but to a limited degree. Because I want to see the game they have planned for us. More than anything. that That's what I want to see. And the fact that we get to pick some, you know, how some characters look and, you know, we get some cool little awards and, you know, there's some classic systems we want to see in place, you know, that's cool. But a lot of these, I think they had already planned on adding already. I think duels was probably in their mind and stuff like that. You know, we got, for example, background checks, you know, that that's a pretty small thing to have to have added to the game. Right. You know, we're not changing huge, crazy things. So I'm glad they're very much sticking with their core vision and I, I don't think they're going to compromise that just to just to play placate everybody so i will be back for a final Uden chronicle update when the kickstarter is over to go over everything else that's been brought to light in terms of information all the goals we reached the final you know amount of funds that we've raised and just to celebrate with everybody for all all of uh, everyone's hard work you know a lot of people are putting a lot of you know sweat blood and tears into this kickstarter and I really appreciate, uh, you know, seeing all of you work so hard and be so passionate about this game. So I'll be back for a final update. I'll see you guys then. Thank you very much for joining me for uh, another Uden Chronicle update. See you later.